You know, I've often said on the show, my husband didn't marry me for my cooking skills. I can't cook, but thank God, Mike is a great cook. Mwah! And it is true that women love men who cook. Local author John Morris wrote this new cookbook to give men confidence in the kitchen to create something that looks and tastes great. And John joins us now this morning to mix up one of his recipes from the book. Nice to have you on the show, John. Thanks, Denise. Happy to be here. First off, where'd you get the idea for this, this new book, Women Love Men Who Cook? Well, when I was married in the 80s, I did a lot of entertaining, and I found that it was fun for me to be able to do the cooking to entertain the people. Oh. And I got a lot of compliments from that, and I thought, well, this is fun. I like compliments, you know. So everyone uh, kept saying, well, give me that recipe and that recipe. So I decided to compile them all into a book. Smart. And I was talking to my brother-in-law one day, and I said, you know, what am I going to name this? It's about women loving men who cook. And he says, well, that's the that's title. It. Ding, 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 I said, ding. What? That's it. <laughs> And so what? I said, women love men who cook. So I use that, and I've trademarked that yeah. for aprons, obviously. But the book is really to inspire men who thinks the kitchen, think the kitchen is too mysterious. Right. And they want to go in there and create something to impress somebody, presumably a woman. And uh, What so type I, of recipes are we going to find in that book? Well, there's a whole variety of them. They're, the main dishes are divided up into to, uh, Mexican food, which I call Southwestern, America, Italian, Asian. American and a food and a fish section. And you can see on the screen now, there's a picture of my meatballs. That's uh, something that's in there. And I have appetizers, I've got salads, uh, sauces, that sort of Delicious. thing. Delicious. So and we should point out, John is not a professional chef, but you've been cooking for people for a really long time. What do they say about your cooking? Well, to my face, they always tell me it's really good. <laughs> That's a good thing, isn't I, it? It is a good thing. <laughs> I don't know what they say behind my back, but they usually come back for more, so I think things are going pretty well. Let's put you to the test. Okay. Let's have you cook today. What are you going to make? Well, we're going to make a little pork fried rice today, which is an excellent way to use leftover pork. I cooked a, a pork tenderloin the other night, and so I chopped it up in relatively bite-sized pieces. And this is a perfect recipe here to give you the idea of what I mean by getting organized yeah. and paying attention. Okay, so like I said earlier, I'm a horrible cook, so much so that when my son was sick and he couldn't go to work at King Supers, the manager called me and asked if I cooked for him. No kidding. Oh, <laughs> so what's great. the one thing I should know so I don't mess up when I'm cooking? Well, I say in the book many times, pay attention. Okay. And so what we've got here, I've got things lined up basically in the order that I'm going to put them in. That makes it easy. So th do that in advance. That way you've got it all set and put together. All so right. Walk me through the recipe. Get Let's get cooking. I've got a couple of eggs here, which I've already cracked into this. And fried rice basically is scrambled eggs. So you want to do this. Just scramble them up a little bit. Scramble them up. And you want them in very small pieces because you want them to coat basically the whole, whole thing. Now, I need to point out, I usually do this in a wok, which is... Right on the counter there because it has higher sides and you got less. But for TV purposes, we had to do it this way. Yes. So. As you're doing that, where can people get a copy of your book? Well, I work part time at Parker Payless Liquors, which is the biggest liquor store in Parker with the best selection of everything. Hey, great. And we have it in there for sale. And then it's also on Amazon and I have it on my website, womenlovemenwhocook.com. Okay. And so they can get it there. It's between you and me, it's a little cheaper at the store and on my website than it is on Amazon. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hey, that's smart then. You can go to womenlovemenwhocook.com. And I should also point out that John's single, ladies, and he said, hey, if a lady wants to get in touch with me, I'll come out and cook for her, right? Well, I'm not quite that undiscriminating, but <laughs> within, within reason, yeah. Within reason. Okay, you threw some onions in there? I did. The onions go in next because they need to be softened up a bit. And uh, is that uh, a half an onion that you chopped up, or it's about a half of a sweet okay. onion? All right. And I chop them up in vertical strips that way. This recipe is pretty convenient too. It doesn't take too long. It doesn't, and that's one of the reasons we're doing it today is because we don't have a lot of time. Right. You know, the brown chicken and then saute mushrooms and all of that stuff. All right. So we, this goes pretty quick. We have about a minute and a half left, so let's start okay. throwing in the other parts of the recipe. All right. And again, um, you can go to womenlovemenwhocook.com if you'd like to order the book or actually find out more about John. Now, how many recipes do you think are in this book, John? I counted them recently. There's 143. Wow, that's yeah. great. And I think one of the things about it, too, I mean, every cookbook has recipes. Right. 
Uh, the thing that sets this one apart is the philosophy about cooking and attracting people with your cooking and people enjoying other, you know, events together with cooking. Yeah. So you're throwing in some red peppers. Red peppers, water chestnuts. There's the pork, which is obviously already cooked. Okay. And, and mushrooms. Is that mushroom? Love mushrooms. And we I'll usually get that take the there. top out. <laughs> but for TV purposes today, um, quickly, where did you get these recipes? Is there handed down to you from family members? There's some of that, not too much. A lot of these recipes I've had for so long, I don't even know where they came from. Really? But so family secrets? Yeah. Well, I've probably got my first meatball recipe out of Betty Crocker. I don't know. <laughs> But, you know, obviously I've put a spin on everything. So right. It, uh, Boy, that looks delicious. has my own spin on it. Do and um, We have about 20 of, seconds left. Do we throw the, the rice in there, from, too? A lot of recipes come from people I know, like two young men that I work with at the liquor store, and uh, Jack's Salmon Cakes and Andrew's Whole Roasted Chicken. So, you know, there's a lot of names of people in there. Very Friends of mine smart. from Texas. And, Things of that nature. Well, so. it looks delicious. Finally, you're pouring in. This is a sauce I made, which is basically soy sauce and chicken stock All right. with some ginger in it to give it a little bit of an Asian we'll flavor. We'll put you to the test. We're going to have everybody eat here at Colorado One Company, and I'll let you know how it tastes. But, my friends, you can pick up a copy of his book, Women Love Men Who Cook, at the Payless Liquor Store in Parker. It's also available on Amazon and, of course, his website, womenlovemenwhocook.com. If you miss this interview, that's okay. We're going to post it on our YouTube. YouTube page. So go ahead and subscribe Colorado and Company on YouTube. You can see all of our interviews on there. Thank you, John. You did an excellent job. You're welcome.